Hey there, lab rat, Sketch here. So you could say I've played the violin quite a bit in my life if the bow was a knife and the strings were my veins, but what makes me go especially prestissimo is when major health organizations spread misinformation about delicate topics, and the FDA handled drug use in adolescents the way Hitler handled the Juden. I remember in high school our teachers took us to see a documentary about drug addiction where they basically kiss-fed us bullshit. Not only was most of the info false, but it was so full of bias the whole thing resembled an episode of Beyond Scared Straight. Now before I start pissing all over my comment section how my videos are all but non-biased, I'll have you know that while I do make a few jokes and rants, the actual information is completely non-biased. Well, mostly anyway. The problem here is when those kids find out that most of what you're saying is bullshit, they'll think that the rest is bullshit as well. The moment I found out that Jaeger bombs won't make your heart stop was the moment I considered sniffing glue. And I, for instance, always knew it was bullshit because I always found drugs fascinating. I just think it's awesome how, say, opiates can make you feel relaxed and not in pain while a doctor is sawing your leg off. However, you see, drugs are like a porn star. You don't actually go and do her, no. You sit on your computer and masturbate to others doing her. That way they're the ones getting the STDs. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm here today. To jerk you off! Well, that analogy went to hell. What I'm trying to say is that hopefully, after this series of videos, you'll be less curious about trying drugs yourself. But before we can learn why these red ones make you fly and these blue ones help you fall, we need to understand what addiction looks like in your brain. Your brain is one big web of interconnected neurons. These neurons communicate by certain chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurons in different parts of the brain use different types of neurotransmitters. The part of the brain we are interested in is the reward circuit, which uses dopamine as its prime neurotransmitter. You might have heard people referring to dopamine as the happiness hormone, but happiness is a too complicated emotion for just one molecule, so it would be more correct to call it the achievement hormone. Dopamine is, among other things, responsible for movement, motivation, and pleasure. The reward circuit is consisted of a few areas in your midbrain, as well as a few areas in your prefrontal cortex. It all begins in the ventral tegmental area, or VTA for short. The VTA is made up of neurons that produce dopamine and send it to other parts of the brain. When you do something that aids your survival, anything from eating to getting an A to having wild passionate sex, your VTA immediately sends dopamine to other areas of the reward circuit. Every addictive drug, directly or indirectly, abuses the system and causes the release of dopamine in the reward circuit, which is what causes addiction. Once the VTA has been activated, it sends dopamine to two other areas, one of which is the nucleus accumbens. Scientists have performed a study where they implanted electrodes in a lab rat's brain that stimulate the release of dopamine into the nucleus accumbens. The rat was given a button that activates the electrodes and it chose to keep pressing this button over stopping to eat and drink. This means that it is this release of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens that makes you want things. And so, when a drug stimulates the release of dopamine to the nucleus accumbens, your brain keeps wanting more of it. Dopamine is also released when the subject is in a drug-related environment, thus creating anticipation of a reward and producing a craving, a much more intense feeling of wanting. The other area in the brain that the VTA sends dopamine to is the prefrontal cortex. The main role of the prefrontal cortex is decision-making, determining what is good and what isn't, thus creating motivation to do things it decides are good. But once a person has become addicted to a substance, his whole brain reprograms itself so that the most important thing now is getting the drug. Increased activity in some parts of the prefrontal cortex caused by drug use are responsible for this. A subject with hyperactivity of these parts of the brain has a much more intense motivation to seek the drug while losing motivation to do naturally rewarding things, such as eating. And that's why you may have heard that your brain on drugs is like a fried egg, because it has literally been reprogrammed. Since drugs bombard the reward circuit with large amounts of dopamine, the number of dopamine receptors in these parts of the brain decreases. This makes the subject feel depressed whenever he is not on the drug and also causes the need for bigger and bigger doses of the drug to experience the same effect, which may later lead to overdoses. This is referred to as tolerance, and it's why drugs turn into being a fix rather than a recreational thing. How long it takes to get addicted is subjective, and it also depends on the dose, frequency, route of administration, and addictive potential of the drug in question. I think I've heard it takes you roughly 10 days to get addicted to heroin if you do a single dose every day, but this is just a speculation, and no one really starts doing heroin by doing it 10 days in a row, so it usually takes longer. However, that doesn't mean that the saying not even once holds no way at all, because once you have tried something like heroin, you will most certainly like it. Actually, chances are that it will be the best thing you ever felt, so normally you're gonna be wanting to do it again. And before you know it, you'll not be able to live without it. And as time passes, it will become the sole reason you are alive, and you will do anything you can do to get to it, even if it means stealing, selling your body, or even harming yourself and the ones you love. So that's it for this video, hope you guys liked it. This is gonna be a little series of videos I'll be making, and in the future videos I'll be explaining exactly how certain types of drugs, opiates for example, affect your physical and psychological state, and in which way they form an addiction in your brain. Also, I'd like to say Happy New Year, and since this will probably be up on January the 1st, how's that hangover working out for you? I hope you like the new look of my videos. Yeah, the random pictures thing wasn't really working out because I started seeing the copyright logo in my breakfast cereal. Please leave a comment, share the video, and if you already haven't, subscribe and join the Lab Rats.